In this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about the anatomy of sleep and what my sleep recommendations from a biomechanical standpoint uh, are for you in a, in a kind of generalized way. So first things first, I'm going to stay away from labeling one sleep posture as bad and another as good. I see that espoused a lot where people say things like, uh, you know, if you sleep on your stomach, you know, your spine is gonna hurt, you're gonna give your, you're gonna yourself neck cancer. Uh, you know, if, if you sleep on your back, it's terrible for your, uh, for, for your breathing. I understand sometimes where those things come from, but I think it's uh, just broad scopes, a terrible idea to give overly generalized absolute recommendations about sleep. There's no one sleep posture that works for everyone. So if there's any takeaway from this video at all, outside of the little informational tidbits we're gonna talk about in terms of the anatomy of this stuff, don't over generalize, don't uh, speak in absolutes about any sort of discomfort problem uh, specifically with sleeping though. So sleeping first and foremost is obviously an activity that we, we, we do throughout a longer period of time, right? And so it's totally normal. You know, think about it from the, from this perspective where it's like you could sit in the comfiest chair uh, ever, you know, uh, let's say it's a reclining chair and you're like, oh my God, this is the best chair ever. You sit in that chair for long enough, eventually you're gonna feel some sort of discomfort somewhere. So the best sleep posture in my estimation is not one, but actually uh, a couple of different postures that you can alternate between. So my strategy, generally speaking, just as a sort of starting point recommendation is I usually try to fall asleep on my side and I almost always wake up uh, somewhere else, whether it be on my back or my stomach or, or whatever else. So just from that starting point recommendation, again, staying away from generalized absolutes, I tend to like a pillow that's a little bit thicker uh, on average than, than most people, specifically for two main reasons. So first things first is you want a pillow, generally speaking, that doesn't uh, to allow too much side bending and rotation of the neck, just specifically because I find that if people spend too much time in a sort of side bendy position or a side bendy and rotate -y type position, they tend to not feel too good with that. Neutral is sort of a buzz term, word, whatever you want to call it, but I personally like to use neutral uh, insofar as it's a uh, representation of just a sort of uh, resting point that tends to be most uh, productive or efficient from a force perspective, right? So a neutral posture, a neutral spine uh, is, is a spine that can access multiple different ranges of motion, right? It's basically a sort of middle ground to starting point, which tends to be where we're very efficient from a force producing or a force resisting perspective. So neutral in terms of head, neck posture, will never be one single thing uh, for everyone as we are anatomically different. But in terms of the pillow recommendation, if you do a little pillow test here, right, and you put it on, on your shoulder, you don't really want a pillow that would be like this far away from you. So your head ends up in this position the whole night. That tends to not be too comfortable for people, right? You have a lot of length here. You have a lot of shortened stuff here. Um, what tends to be more comfortable is a pillow height and specifically a pillow uh, position that actually wedges into the sort of uh, upper middle trap area that you can actually articulate yourself against. And in tandem with this, what I tend to find very comfortable, and I'll lay down here and demonstrate it for uh, in, in a second here, is I actually like to put my hand a little bit uh, sort of underneath of the pillow to act as a little bit of a, of a buffer, okay? So if I lay down, and just to kind of give a, give a demo here, if I lay down and this pillow is too low, I might end up with my head sort of cranked this way the whole night and I might end up in a position where you know I feel some discomfort on, on the left side or the right side of the neck as a, as a potential consequence. But what tends to feel really good for me is if I actually hold the pillow supported down toward the base of my neck, right? Because obviously the base of the neck is where you want the pillow to start, right? You don't want the pillow all the way up here. That's not really doing anything for you. You want the pillow wedged in and you want it in a position where it's really, really well structurally supporting you, especially from the standpoint, again, of that you know neutral position that we talk about where, again, just as a starting point, this may be beneficial for you if you're someone who tends to get lots of discomfort. Now, another thing is you may want to play around with the stiffness or the sort of squishiness of the pillow. Some people tend to prefer a little bit more of a stiff pillow because it holds them in one position. Other people feel a little bit better when they're able to actually move around a little bit more. I personally prefer a little bit more of a squishy pillow. So that's kind of just general neck stuff. If you are someone who likes to lay on your side, if you are someone who likes to lay on your stomach, I highly recommend uh, alternating between which sort of cervical rotation that you go through. So if you are laying flat, you know, rotating your head to the left or to the right is, is totally fine. And that will likely change throughout the night anyway. So there's, you know, a certain amount of this stuff that we can actually control insofar as what positions we fall asleep in. And then beyond that, again, you know, if you're unconscious, you're asleep, it's not gonna be much of a, of, of a talking point to discuss, you know, what you could do about that because it's out of your control. Now, if you are someone that likes to sleep on your back and you find that sleep 
sleeping on your back is comfortable. In terms of pillow height, it's very important that you have a pillow that actually, again, supports the base of the neck and that you don't end up in a position where your chin is actually, we call this cervical atlantal or atlantal occipital retraction where your head kind of falls back this way. And most of you just normally will kind of feel that if you shove your chin back this way, it's, it's quite an uncomfortable sensation to be able to start to breathe basically because that's, you know, if, if you've, any of you are familiar with jujitsu, that's basically how people more efficiently choke other people, right? To basically limit airflow and shut off that sort of, uh, that clear path of air um, uh, in, into the lungs. So what I recommend again is having a pillow that's not too flat, but one that actually allows your head to articulate just a little bit forward, a little bit more that upper cervical spine into extension type of deal. So laying on your side, laying on your back, similar principles insofar as that neck position thing, which is I'm basically just trying to, whatever position I'm fairly comfortable in standing, I'm going to try to actually sort of mimic somewhat of a similar posture when I'm sleeping. Again, I'm not like thinking overly too much about this stuff. It's more just like what positions are comfortable your body usually tells you. And, and if you are in an uncomfortable position when you wake up, a lot of times there is a, a sort of acute and immediate effect of that. Now, so covered like sort of neck stuff, shoulder stuff I briefly mentioned, but what I would recommend is if you are someone who has a little bit more mass on their body, if you're someone who's a little bit more muscular, I would probably recommend as a starting point that you have some kind of, of side pillow. Um, so that is essentially just to kind of prevent an overly uh, significant amount of side bending. And if you're someone who has spinal issues, I have a friend who has spine issues. He's a, he's a massive bodybuilder. And whenever he tends to get in too much of a side bendy compromised position, again, specific just as a trigger point for him, he tends not to feel too great. So again, using a similar concept with this pillow, you can actually put a pillow underneath of you this way so that you don't end up sort of sinking into the bed and side bending away from you know a particular um, a, a pain point or into a particular pain point rather that may be triggering for you. So again, what I recommend as a starting point for anyone in discomfort pain, pillow here, support again, base of the neck, potentially pillow here. And then final thing would be to talk a little bit about the lower body, where, and I'm sure many of you have either seen people do this or tried it themselves, you actually have a pillow and you put it between your thighs. So if I'm gonna lay down over here, again and just picture i'm kind of you know pillow here pillow here you want the pillow to run the length of the femurs right because if you if it's a smaller pillow and you just put it on the top or if you just put it on the bottom kind of defeats the purpose this again is basically just to get your hips into a position where they're basically neutrally aligned so that you, again you might not fall into too much adduction or if your legs are starting to twist any which way move a little bit too much beyond discomfort you know that might not be great so i like to typically put a pillow here for people who have any kind of hip tightness hip issues waking up uh, this could also be um, and some, you know, something that may be helpful to those of you with any kind of lower back discomfort, um, just because people, you know, when they tend to fall this way, they tend to do all their stuff with their spine. So again, just give this a shot. So, you know, in total, it would be like pillow here, pillow underneath, and then pillow uh, by the head. And in terms of, you know, fluffiness, resistance to being smushed, all of those things are variable and may help you um, with, you know, different issues, depending on who you are and what your issues are. So in terms of the overall anatomical concepts the concepts basically always relay back to what is the kind of comfortable neutral for you and that's not to say that neutral is the only posture that you should be assuming or that neutral is the only thing that it could be comfortable for anyone but I typically find that neutral as a concept is very helpful to understand specifically just as an example in reference to that neck position thing the side bending thing you know same thing in the trunk and same thing in, in the femurs and in the lower body wherein if you are in this kind of weird, obscure, asymmetrical position for a very long time and your body is not used to articulating in a particular way, it may be helpful to kind of try to revert yourself back to that neutral spot so you can at least um, gain some degree of sort of standardization night to night and you can kind of assess, okay, which positions are comfortable, which aren't. And again, if you are someone who has a lot of trouble sleeping because you're waking up from these weird pain things or you're waking up in the morning being really stiff, uh, trying to basically uh, constrain yourself in certain ways gives you again, a better sense of feedback on what positions may be better or what may be worse. And the last thing I want to talk about just briefly is the stomach sleeping thing. Some people find that stomach sleeping is incredibly comfortable and incredibly natural. I am actually one of those people where if there are certain times where I feel like I can't fall asleep on my side just because of whatever reason, it could even just be stress related, right? Not even just anything physical. Um, I tend to actually go onto my stomach. And when I do that, 
I like to actually stack my hands uh, below my pillow or at least one of my hands below my pillow um, so that I can turn my head in any which way and so that it's not sort of falling forward, uh, the, which would be kind of the opposite problem as to or as compared to that one where I was saying, you know, your chin might be falling backwards. So I mean, if you are going to sleep on your stomach, which is a totally fine thing, many of you may find comfortable, um, I would recommend, you know, either using a slightly bigger pillow, very slightly bigger, uh, or using a pillow or, or uh, rather a pillow hand combo that allows you to stack your hand up a little bit more um, so that when it is rotated because your head has to be rotated, um, it's a little bit more supported and it doesn't tend to fall too far forward again out of that neutral-ish zone that we might want to be actually starting at. So hopefully some of these recommendations as far as the pillow stuff were helpful. Um, this pillow is an especially fluffy one. This is not this is not the one that I use, but just one that we had kind of laying around on the side of the bed here. Um, if you have any questions about um, you know what kinds of issues you're experiencing during sleep, and you know maybe I can give some recommendations as to how to potentially remedy some of those things, definitely let me know. Um, but I again the general recommendation is try to find the neutral, observe the response. You might not want to use all the three of those pillows at once. You may just want to try one uh, adjustment and recommendation and then sort of see what that does for you. But again, it's just an assessment, reassessment type thing. You know, maybe you use just the, the, the one bigger pillow to prevent too much side bending or rotation, assess what that does, and then reassess the following week, et cetera. Um, but hopefully some of these recommendations may help some of you. If you, again, if you have any questions, I'll try to get to all of them below.